Hello, this is Jam83, and this is episode 6 of the uh, Lotus My Team F1 2020 career mode. And you can see on the R&D there, we are still second slowest uh, in the pecking order, but the I think certain aspects of the car are getting slightly better now, so the aero was fairly good. And also, uh, the powertrain obviously is fairly okay, because we chose Mercedes at the start of the year. Um, the real weaknesses are the chassis and the durability we're very poor on, but also uh, the engine wear is quite high for this race, so I'm going to swap them out, uh, the ones, the parts that are worn, obviously... A little bit early we've got to do a full season with three components of each uh, and to be swapping them out for round six is quite early on in a 21 race 22 race season sorry um but yeah straight into spain here catalonia a circuit that on previous games i haven't really enjoyed that much but on this one it's been resurfaced a little bit or redone especially the last sector which makes it quite more quite a lot more fun to drive um i think anyway and yeah through the practice programs fairly straightforward this one was and we got purple in track acclimatization first time and also in the tire wear test we got purple as well and the fuel is going to be green it looks like one and a half uh, 1.2 seconds up sorry on the delta so fairly straightforward there as well um and obviously points uh in the two or twice in the last three races and wasn't quite as good um but still yeah we're hoping to get back up towards the uh, the points again this race but through into the race strategy test another 50 points and it's really important to try and yeah, get as many of those points, uh, resource points as possible to upgrade the car as quickly as possible to yeah make it a bit more common that we can be trying to get into Q2 and into the points on a more regular basis and on pace rather than through luck. But straight into qualifying now and uh, it's going to be a okay banker lap. Uh, it's looking like it'll be a, a, a bit slow, but it's a high 1 minute 18, is it going to be? A low, a low 18, sorry, which is 1.4 seconds off of Gasly. We're slower than Russell, but we're actually faster than Delatraz. This is my best lap in qualifying right at the end of Q1. Um, uh, unfortunately, a bit like Zandvoort, this track is very chassis dependent again, so we are going to struggle to get our Q1, but as long as we beat the Deltraz and we're in and amongst the Williams, I'm fairly happy with that. Um, but through Turn 1 and 2, breaking at the uh, about 80 metres for Turn 1 and swinging it through Turn 3 now, trying to keep it as flat out as possible, which in qualifying trim is just about doable in this car. But in the race, it's more like a lift quite early on, but through Turn 4 now, try to keep it as much speed as possible, running all the way over the kerb on the exit, not quite as wide as we could have been there, but braking as late as possible down to here. Very difficult to spot your braking marker there, but through this corner, try to get a good exit, um, a slightly short, short straight, but we're already 9 tenths up on a previous lap, so it's going to be a good lap. Um, if we can carry it on through this corner always difficult to push early enough with a uh, gravel trap on the outside there and then through turn nine D downshift into six maybe didn't need to do that could probably could get it flat out in seventh but down towards the last sector now and we're actually up on george russell but uh yeah it's obviously a williams and there's quite a big gap i think between the williams and the alpha tauris who uh, are the car ahead in 15th i think gasly at the minute so it's going to look like uh it'd be a bit of a tall order to close in on anyone who's not a williams or my teammate down the trans but through the last sector now this is the new part of the track down to second gear for the second last corner locked up slightly on the left hand side there um taking not the best line ever but through the final corner now flat out obviously an opening drs it's a nine tenth of ruben not the best last sector but it's going to be a low 17 up to 17th place actually um, so we didn't even beat Russell, which is a bit disappointing. Um, and that is obviously us out in Q1. I don't quite know what Giovinazzi was doing, um, but you can see, yeah, three tenths between Russell and Grosjean there in 16th. So very well done to Russell, actually, qualifying 17th. They're almost getting out of Q1. Um, but unfortunately, it's 18th on the grid. I don't think there are any grid penalties this time, unfortunately. Uh, so it's going to be, yeah, exactly where we qualified for the first time this season, I think. And we're starting on medium tyres, going to hard tyres, and getting straight onto the grid for the fire lights for the, the Spanish Grand Prix from Barcelona. And it's a lights out and away we go. Very short hold, but it's an unbelievable launch, it looks like. We're already ahead of uh, Russell and Gasly. And there's Grosjean and Raikkonen. We're trying to stay on the stream of the Haas car. And just looking to the outside line, he's going to force us over the curbs a little bit. But we're trying to break late, almost getting a bit of a contact there with Grosjean. But running outside of oh, everyone, alongside Perez now for 12th place. There are loads of oversteer on the exit of turn two, through turn three, trying to keep as many positions as possible, higher speed as possible on the outside. Kvyat is there on the inside, but going to break, break late into turn four. Um, uh, hold that position for now. Maybe thinking about the outside of Perez, but he's a little bit too far ahead on that occasion. We see Ocon and Stroll still going side by side. That's going to hold them up, and Perez going very slowly. Thought about a dive down the inside of turn five, but uh, not going to happen, unfortunately. So 13th place, though, up five places in the first sector of the first lap, which is very good progress for a, uh, a track that's usually quite hard to overtake on. And now down towards the uh, middle sector, turn nine on heavy fuel is very not, not flat. Um, and running a little bit wide over the curves on exit. Perez and Stroll uh, just ahead of me, but we're breaking very late. Going to send one on Perez down the inside off turn 10, try to clip the inside nicely, and Perez is backed out of that fairly straightforwardly. And uh, yeah, very good progress for the first lap. We're up into 12th place, and you can see Stroll and Ocon. Uh, Stroll's actually on softs, so we might be able to stay with him for a little bit because obviously those tires are going to start dying, but unfortunately that wasn't how it played out. 
and lap three now, and Perez just behind me through turn three. We're going to try and take a, an open line as possible. We've actually gone too narrow there, way over the curbs, onto the grass almost. And Perez is going to have a good opportunity here. Might be using some overtake mode as well. And down the outside, the Mexican goes and uh, trying to hold the inside line of turn four, which is a very long corner, so it should be easy to hold. And can be out also buzzing all over the back of Perez, so it's going to be difficult to hold these drivers up. As I said in qualifying, like the the car pace is very poor. It's all about the defensive driving from here on, really. Um, and one lap later again, lap four, and through the same corner again, trying gone a bit a little bit wider on entry, but yeah, still over those curves on the middle part and we've gone wide there. That's gonna give us a terrible run and Perez is gonna have a good opportunity. Is he gonna send one down the inside? No he isn't, but I'm gonna go a little bit wide through missing the apex slightly and Perez is gonna have a good run out of the corner and down towards the next corner, try and break late, force Perez wide, we're still at the inside line, locking up the front left, a little bit of contact, but I think that was always gonna happen with how narrow that corner is and locking up the front left. Um, but now down towards the next corner, we've got the inside line and breaking late and down to fourth gear, forcing Perez out and that's actually going to could be out maybe a chance as well but you can see the gap is 4.2 seconds to stroll already which is yeah really not weird. It's what you want to see through turn nine trying to get as flat out as possible DRS is now enabled so Perez is going to go go for it down the inside into the turn 10 as I did to him on lap one and he's made that move stick very nice move for the uh, Mexican in the racing point car and through the final sector unfortunately not going to be close enough to Perez for anything to happen so let's have another look at a replay of the start it was an incredible start from 18th on the grid to be honest um, Hamilton looks like he bogged down loads and the car in second place which I think it's Bottas uh, got him a, lot, a lot better but then looking further back we see myself already ahead of Russell and Gasly and then Grosjean forced me over the curves quite a lot we sent one down the outside of I think that's Kvyat and Grosjean and we uh, obviously later in the lap took Perez as well but up five places by the time we got into turn two really that was a very nice start. Uh, we ran pretty wide, but Kvyat didn't have a chance, as we know. And uh, back into the here and now. And the 12th place, a load of oversteer, though, on exit. And that's going to give Kvyat a massive chance. Perez has sort of bolted away about up three seconds now. There's only two hours later as well, so the pace really isn't very good compared to the cars around me. But a few cars in the pits as well. But Kvyat's the one I've got to worry about. Down towards turn one, he's going to have the outside line, but he's going to be ahead into braking zone. I'm almost going to hit him, actually, very early braking for the Russian there, but not quite. And just checking we didn't get damaged, which we didn't, luckily. Um, but our Grosjean on the next car is all over me as well. You can see on the engine parts, the control electronics are already on 62% with like seven laps into the race. That's going to be one to keep an eye on as well. As uh, I don't want the electronics to break later in the race. But Hamilton now, who has pit early, he's always on a two-stop um, because they all the top 10 started on soft tyres. He's going to go steamrolling past in his Mercedes and yeah, take that position very easily. No really, not really much point fighting. But you can see just four laps have passed and Kvyat is already five seconds up the road. So yeah, it's looking pretty difficult to hold on to these positions. And here comes Kimi Raikkonen in the Alfa Romeo which usually isn't that quick but he's going to go for it down the inside turn one I tried to go defensive but Kimi is down the inside we're going to try and hold it in fourth gear around the outside turn one because it's the inside line for turn two and Raikkonen still there on turn three though he's going to have the inside line for this very long right hander uh, but using a little bit of overtake later on in the corner and down the inside we're going to try it into turn four we're close enough for a move breaking very late and down the inside of the uh, the 40 year old in the uh, Alfa Romeo and yeah, back down to medium and we've taken that position nicely and down towards turn four uh, turn five now sorry and we've taken that place back up into eighth on lap 12 but we've got a pit stop coming up um, and yeah lap 14 the pit stop is right now and peeling off into the pit lane Raikkonen didn't really have the pace for the rest of that so that's helpful to see because if, if it's just Raikkonen and Gasly behind me for the rest of the race then we should be okay to maybe hold them off because we saw a few laps there where they weren't really had they didn't have the pace to close up to me which is nice to see but through the pit lane now uh, they're obviously going to stop first because they're um, actual F1 teams and we're a made up one so onto the hard tyres lap 15 pretty close to halfway half distance and 2.7 actually and Gasly has jumped Raikkonen which is even better for us um, I actually forgot that we were right uh, the pit X ended there um, and, didn't, and didn't turn off the limiter quick enough so yeah, interesting to see there, but yeah, Gasly is now the car that I'm having to hold off, um, which is even more helpful because obviously the Honda engine on the straights is not as good as the Ferrari engine, um, and Gasly is, uh, well, the car itself is not as fast as the Alfa Romeo, so I should be able to, if I can keep getting good traction, then I should be able to hold him off, but meanwhile, Sergio Perez, who were battling early on, is out of the race with mechanical issues, um, so that's, that's from ahead of me as well, so that's one more place, so up into 11th when we overtake him. Uh, there he is on the right hand side there and the safety car is out as well which means that a few cars are going to be pitting including the two McLarens there and the other racing point of Stroll, the sole remaining racing point that's elevated me to 8th place um, under the safety car and yeah we saw in China um, how important track position is and if you can just keep getting good exits especially on a track that's very hard to overtake we should be okay really with Gasly and Raikkonen behind but you can see Leclerc has absolutely left me for dead I'm also going to almost bin myself off there with the massive oversteer moment 
that Gasly is going to be very close down towards turn one here. Lost loads of time to Leclerc, obviously, on the restart. And Gasly is going to try it on the outside in his, in his Alpha Tauri. Um, he's hit me actually down <laughs> at a very high speed. Surprised nothing worse happened there, to be honest. But we just about held him off. Had the inside line for turn one, and that's allowed me to keep hold of the eighth place for now. Um, and really, all I need to do is keep putting into, into effect those good exits. You can see a few laps later, like 24. Uh, Leclerc has overtaken Kvyat, who's now the next car ahead. But through this final corner, we can just switch it up into overtake mode uh, as we get onto the straight. And yeah, just bolt away from the corner, and the DRS is already open, and Gasly is six tenths back, which is not really close enough on such a short straight uh, to make anything happen. He's closing up quite a lot into the braking zone, but yeah, nowhere near close enough to make a move into a high speed turn one, which is, yeah, the circuit really playing to our advantages here because the traction out the last corner is all that really matters. The rest of the circuit, there's not really much chance to overtake unless we get an awful run through here. But on this occasion, it's been absolutely fine. So, yeah, realistically, that was all that happened. It's lap 31 now, about 10 laps later, I think this is. And Gasly is right behind me still. And we've got a big train behind of, uh, I think that's a McLaren and a Racing Point, which both usually would have the pace over me. But I was very lucky that I had the Toro Rosso, the um, Alfa Tauri, sorry, and the Alfa Romeo behind me, which don't really have the pace. You can see Gasly closing in quite a lot down towards turn one again. But yeah, nowhere near close enough uh, for a move into the uh, high speed. Uh, nature of the first few corners and the dirty air effect for the rest of the lap really helped me out having a massive gap ahead to Kvyat um, who I obviously would like to be ahead of but no uh, it's not going to be done because he's way too far ahead and he's uh, gapping me as well and I'm pretty sure everyone would be gapping me but they're stuck behind so yeah the uh, the, high, the the track really helped me out it's very difficult to pass at the best of times and when I'm able to get good exits and good uh, we actually not got overtake mode this time uh, until very late in the straight and Gasly's going to have a good chance down towards turn 1 there with DRS open he's going to go to the inside line and we're going to have to break later than him it was side by side down towards turn 1 for the first time this race it's down the very last lap so we're trying to hold him off for this 8th place with some more points for Lotus um, and we've just about done that and through turn 3 trying to give him a wash of dirt yeah and yeah he's nowhere near close enough to attack into turn 4 and Ryan could imagine to be closer to him than, we, than he is to me um, so you can see the train on the mini out there. We've got, I think, down to about 16th place right behind me. So, uh, but through the last section now, my tyres were not looking in the best of condition. And also, my control electronics were very badly worn by the end of this race. You can see on the bottom right there. Um, but yeah, more importantly, we're coming through the final sector on the final lap. And it's going to be some more points. It's 8th place once again, unless I mess this corner up, which we haven't done. And Gasly is going to get 9th uh, place place myself. Coming across the line for four more points. That's our, uh, our third points finish of the season. And all of them so far have been in eighth, which is a bit a little bit weird, to be honest. Um, but yeah, very happy with that. And up to 12 points in the championship now. And Gasly, uh, a driver of the day for me as well. I think Gasly and Kvyat also scored Alfa Tauri's first points in seventh and ninth, which is a little bit worrying because we were ahead of them in the constructors, but it's going to be very close. Uh, but you see there, Bottas wins the race. Vettel second with Albon third, a very mixed up podium. Um, I don't quite know what happened to Verstappen, but he was nowhere to be seen. Um, myself in 8th place, uh, Louis Delatraz in 18th, very poor from him again, I'm looking forward to sacking him, uh, Perez was the only driver to DNF, Ricardo also stopped but not late enough to count as a uh, non-finisher, um, I'm up to 12th again now, ahead of Sainz as he had a bad race, um, yeah, I don't really think the driver's championship matters this season obviously, um, we're nowhere near anything good, so really all that matters is the constructors try and finish as high as possible, and we're still ahead of Alpha Tauri, but with their points finished there, they've closed up quite a lot, um, and yeah, the rivalry is strong here. You can see all fairly standard. Um, but yeah, that's going to be the end of this video. I hope you have enjoyed. If you have, leave a like, subscribe if you want to see more. This has been JY3, and I will see you next time.